Hello, my name is Tom Menz. We can build simple state charts using uh, a plugin that's uh, built on top of Eclipse with which you can easily develop state charts. In fact, the tool uh, which you can find on www.statecharts.org allows you not only to uh, edit models, to create new models, but also to validate the models uh, so that you can see whether they are syntactically correct and the tool uh, gives you indications about how to resolve the problems that you have. In addition to this, you can also execute the models, so you can directly simulate the models while running to see what's going on with them. Uh, it will listen to events that you can trigger yourself. And the tool also features uh, generation of code from your models, either in Java, C or C++. So it's a quite uh, sophisticated uh, tool that uh, today is corresponds to the state of the art in, uh, in model-driven uh, software development. So uh, to start showing how this tool works, I will uh, open up uh, an Eclipse browser in which I have installed uh, Yakindo and we will start creating a new project. So here it goes. I will open Eclipse and let me, let me create a new project. Just a basic Java project will suffice. We give the name of the project. So to start with, let us make a very simple example uh, of a, a clock state chart. Okay, next. Uh, okay, once the project has been created, we will have to do one more thing, which is to create a subfolder in this project for creating Yakindo state chart models. So here uh, in the Yakindo wizard, let's create a new state chart model. The name of this model has to be chosen. Let's give it simply the name clock. Okay, let's finish this. Okay, then it will ask to, uh, to change to the Yakindu modeling perspective because we used to be in the Java perspective but we're actually doing uh, modeling. So it will switch perspectives so that we get a nice uh, visual uh, interface rather than a, a Java interface. Okay, and uh, what we see now is uh, we have created uh, first, we open it up here. So we have created in clock state charts a uh, first uh, state chart uh, diagram. The extension is SCT. And here we see our uh, state chart, which is basically empty. Uh, there's already one initial state that has been created, which uh, doesn't have a name yet. So let's uh, say that, okay, uh, what do we want to do? We want simply our first state should be the possibility to display uh, the to display the clock to display the value of the clock so of course if you have to display something we need some value to display uh, but let's do this in a later state uh, so maybe first thing we want to do now is uh, create some extra states so I will do this here so suppose that uh, in a clock, we want to display both two things, the time, the hour maybe, which is better than the hour of the clock, and the seconds of the clock. So I create two different states. So now we see that this second state uh, has a red cross on it. Basically, it's uh, already a syntactic indication that this uh, simple state chart is not syntactically correct. Uh, the reason for this is that the second state, display seconds, is not reachable. So to make it reachable, I need to add a transition from the first state to the next one. Uh, okay, seconds should be in English uh, with a uh, capital, uh, with a uh, plural. Okay, so now I have uh, 
a model with two states and I can go from the one state to the other. You can see here that there is a small uh, sign that indicates that there is a problem here. Well, uh, basically it's that we didn't specify what this transition is doing. So currently it's uh, an autom automatic transition. But uh, what we want to do here is to put an event on it. Uh, so essentially the idea is that our clock will have two buttons. The first button will allow us to uh, move... Uh, well, let's start with a very simple case where the clock only has one button that allows us to go from the display hour state to the display second state and back again. So, and let's call this uh, button the mode button. So this means that I'm going to open up this transition, click on it and specify the event that will trigger the transition. So, okay, I've done this. So now you see that the sign has turned into red, which basically means that there is uh, something more that's wrong. Uh, and that's in fact the fact that we also need to uh, specify here uh, in the interface of the clock uh, that we need some incoming event which is this mode event that we just defined. <coughs> um, okay, we have to specify this event. You can see that there is something wrong here. Uh, we have to specify this event as part of an interface. Okay, so the clock interface now has one incoming event, which is the mode button, which means that starting from now, state machine can listen to incoming events of type mode. Uh, I will do one step more, which is to link the display seconds transition, the, sorry, the display seconds state back to this display hour state uh, using the same event mode. So like this, I will have a kind of cyclic behavior. Like this. And this is uh, probably one of the smallest uh, state charts that you can imagine. Uh, and now let's see, let's uh, have a look at how we could run this state chart. So I make, will make the screen a little bit uh, bigger because otherwise uh, you will not see anything. So what I want to do now is uh, simulate the model. To do this, I just click on the Run button that you can see here to run the state chart simulation. Okay, filing. Okay, I first have to save the change to my model, otherwise it will not work. And uh, okay, I will close this uh, debug uh, menu, which is not needed because there are, there are no bugs in my uh, implementation. What we see now is okay, the state chart uh, is actually running, and we are currently in the display hour state, which is the initial state of our state chart. Here, in the simulation uh, view, which is uh, which you can see here on the right side of the screen, uh, we see that uh, okay, the interface that I've put here it doesn't have any name. That's why uh, it's called default. And within it, you see that there is one mode event that can be triggered. So it's a simulation, so this means that we can actually manually trigger this uh, mode event by clicking on mode. Let's see what happens if I do this. So if I click on mode, we go from the display hour state to the display second state because the mode event was, was triggered and this give, gave rise to a transition to the display second state. Okay, so now you can already guess what will happen if I do the same but in the opposite direction. When I click on mode again, I will uh, trigger this mode transition uh, event from display seconds to display hour. So let me do it again, and the second transition will be fired, and we go back to display hour. Like this, we can of course uh, continue. So basically, we have a loop in which we can always go from one event to the other. Okay, so uh, so far the simulation. So you can see that actually creating state charts and simulating state charts become very easy with uh, this tool. So it allows you to start manipulating uh, state charts uh, and playing around with it 
in a very easy way.